Now we just derived a closed form solution for W. We found a W that solved the least squares regression problem or equivalently the maximum likelihood estimation problem. And essentially we derived a one step algorithm to find the optimal W. Now in this video we're going to present an alternative, more compute friendly approach to obtaining an optimal W. Now I'm interested in a more compute friendly approach because in our direct approach, um, where the, in which the solution is given by this, uh, I need first of all to process all data at once. Uh, and But most importantly, I'm, I have to compute a matrix inversion of an M by N matrix. So that's this particular matrix over here. And especially taking this inverse is a computationally very demanding task. And this scales, so it, its complexity is in the order of M uh, cubed. Right, so if I pick my number of features, because that was M, M was the number of basis uh, functions. If I let this grow, then the complexity or the compute associated with solving this solution also really uh, grows really rapidly. So generally when we want to find the solution in a direct step, then um, this can be very computationally demanding and also can require quite a lot of memory of your um, system. Then we move on to a more compute efficient approach. Um, we're going to move there by making two observations. First of all, we denote that the total error uh, is, consists of the sum of all these individual errors, right? Because I, I am able to compute this error for each data point individually, and my total error is just the sum of this thing. And so what I'm going to do, instead of computing all these errors at once and solving for the solution, for all my data points at once, I'm going to do it step by step. So I'm going to pick one data point, I'm going to look at the error, I'm going to tune, tune my W parameters a little bit as to minimize the error for this particular data point. Um, okay, change W and then move on to the next data point and tune W again. Okay, and this really leads to the stochastic part of our uh, solution, which I'm going to uh, explain in more detail in the upcoming slides. Uh, so the stochastic part comes from the fact that we're not using with the precise error that we're interested in, but we're going to make an approximation of an error with just a subset of, of data points, or maybe even one data point at a time. Okay, so that's one part of it. And the second part is that we're going to rely on gradient descent as an optimization technique. So the second part is gradient descent, and I'll explain in the next slide um, the principle behind gradient descent. Okay, so the stochastic part refers to um, approximating the total error with less data points and this gradient descent part refers to um, a way for minimizing my error. Okay, so and before I explain the gradient descent, I first want to make some remarks about the gradient, some a recap of, of things known about the gradient. First of all, the gradient encodes for all directional derivatives via the scalar product. And with that I mean, uh, first of all, let's say uh, the derivative of my energy, or of my error with respect to W, is defined to be this derivative with respect to the error and this was defined to be a row vector, right? So the derivative of E with respect to the first component, the derivative with respect to the second component, etc. Okay, in our convention, the derivative is a row vector. Then the directional derivative, uh, so let's say I consider some direction in Rm, then the directional derivative is simply given by the scalar product or this row vector multiplication of the, my gradient with uh, my vector. All right, so suppose my energy landscape looks something like this. So this is like a height map, right? A height map of the energy uh, landscape. Now I can compute a gradient and this gradient is, is this covector or this row vector. 
And if I want to compute the directional derivative, let's say in this direction. So I want to know how much changes the landscape in this direction. So I have some direction vector and I have a gradient of my energy and then um, the derivative in the direction V. So how much does my energy landscape changes in the direction of V is given by the product of my gradient with this direction vector. And that would give me the change in error along direction V. And recall that in our convention, the gradient is a row vector. So uh, I'm doing really row times vector and that gives me one number and this number represents the change in direction in the direction of V. Okay. Um, now another thing is that uh, the gradient is always perpendicular to the contours of a function. So again, let's consider our error function. Now if I compute the gradient of this thing and the lines that I draw over here, those are really the ISO contours. So those are the weights for which my error takes on some constant value. So you can think of this as a height map and each line uh, represents the height of my error and uh, when it becomes smaller I get these different rings and this will be the value, the valley which we're interested in, right? Okay, so then um, the gradient, so that's a property of the gradient. The gradient is always perpendicular to these uh, ISO contours. So the gradient of E is perpendicular to these ISO contours. And then the, the above two properties together actually give me uh, directly that the gradient always points in the direction of steepest ascent, right? So again, think of this as a mountain landscape. These are the ISO contours, then the gradient points me in the direction of the steepest uh, part of the mountain, of, of the ridge where I'm cur currently standing. Okay, and these properties of the gradient also with respect to ISO contours are uh, also discussed in uh, the book of Bishop in Appendix E. Um, and I can imagine that there's plenty of YouTube videos explaining gradient descent. So also take a look at those if, if you want to get more uh, feeling on this. Okay, so moving on. These are some properties of the gradient. Okay, so what we're going to do is gradient descent. So if I have this uh, mountain landscape or this error landscape, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at some point. So let's say I'm going to start uh, at this point. I'm going to look at the gradient, it points in this direction, and the gradient tells me the direction of steepest ascent. So inversely, also the direction of steepest descent. And now I'm just going for, I'm just going downhill. So I'm going to follow uh, the negative uh, gradient direction. So that brings me to the next point. So let's say it's somewhere over here. Then I look at the gradient and I'm going to move downhill to this point. What is the gradient there? Well, it points in this direction. Okay, and I continue until I reach the lowest point in my uh, landscape. Now, this is the principle behind gradient descent, right? So the idea is I'm going to start with some initial set of uh, parameters for W, let's call it W0. I'm going to update it by going downhill, that gives me W1 going to update it by going downhill in this uh, error landscape that gives me w2, w3. So I have the sequence of new parameters for w where each one is slightly better uh, in the sense that it has a lower error associated with it. Okay now as mentioned before we're not going to use the full error function and recall that this error function is really also a function of my data points. So really all my data points together define this full error function. Uh, instead of using all data at once, I'm going to just consider one um, error for one particular data point at a time. So you can imagine that this error, it might look like the, the, the true error, uh, because maybe I make the same mistakes for each data point. Like so suppose I do some over uh, estimation for each data point, then each data point would give the same error. Uh, so these things will be very close, but generally each error at each data point will be different. Uh, 
So also if I compute the gradient of this thing, it will not be the precise gradient of my full uh, error, but it will be something that maybe looks like it. So maybe it looks like this. So we can think of this. So this would be then the gradient of W with respect to E, whereas uh, this red one would have been the gradient of W with respect to E D. So the gradient computed on my full data set. Now, if I compute the, the gradient with respect to E, so with only one or a few data points, I would get a noisy estimate. And if I then use this to move downhill, I would move somewhere over here, for example, I compute again, some noisy estimate, again, a noisy estimate, noisy estimate, and so on. Uh, but these estimates are good enough in the sense that, uh, well, in the end, if my update step is small enough, I am I actually have the guarantee that I'll end up uh, converting to the to the global optimal. So my update steps are noisy, but in general uh, they're good enough to to really make this downhill process. So we're really approaching the global optimum also in this uh, stochastic gradient descent case. So I have these noisy update steps, which are not perfect, but on average, they will get me uh, definitely down, downhill. And this is the principle behind stochastic gradient descent. And it's nice because I only need to evaluate the gradient from one particular data point at a time and update uh, my weight parameters. Okay, so that, uh, so the stochastic gradient descent algorithm is summarized here. So we initialize with the W, choose a learning rate uh, eta, and then we iterate over the data points where we really move in a downhill direction. So let's just write out what this thing uh, says. So we have the previous set of weights and we're going to update it with the gradient of this thing. So really of this thing. And we computed that gradient before. So this is given by ti minus w at iteration tau phi of xi times phi xi. Now we derived the gradient, the gradient of the squared error term before. And I just want to make a remark here that we put a transpose over here because we took the convention that my gradient, that my gradient was a row vector, w is a vector. So actually this thing had to be turned into um, a vector and that's why, why we put this transpose over here. And that's why you don't see the transpose over here, whereas pre previously we had a transpose over there. Okay, so this is all there is to, to it. So this is quite easy to implement. You only need to implement this update rule. So we pick a weight factor. Uh, we have an analytic form of my, uh, of my gradient step. Uh, so which I compute just for one data point. So this is really efficient to compute. And I update it and I iterate it. And if my eta, so my step size is small enough or my learning rate is tall in, small enough, I actually have that uh, my gradient descent converges to the global optimum, where it converges to the global optimum because we're considering here a convex optimization problem.